cool tutorial. Oh, I'm excited. Yes. And we have the uh, Inspiration Gallery. Another of our viewers sent some pictures for us to get inspired. A best tip from Robert Imbriali. And we are going to get to know more about a product. And and and, 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 the super offer. The super offer of the week. Let's watch. So today we have Nick Kinnis here in the studio with us, and welcome Hello. back. Thank you. <laughs> Good Thank to you. have you back here with the bugs. Yes, of yeah. course, my bugs. Well, we are going to talk a lot about a lot of things, and you are so graceful to prepare a tutorial for us, which is really exciting. But first, I want to ask you one thing. So I mentioned last time that you are a well-known wire artist, but I think you have played with fiber all your life, right? Tell I me have. a little bit about that. Yes, I have always had a really big obsession with fabric. I don't know why, I've just always loved it. So I started sewing when I was really young. My mom actually taught me how to do basic sewing skills, and that's just something I kind of progressed on as I got older, I just enjoyed it. I also started making uh, gowns and clothing for people, so I do nice. have some of that sewing uh -huh. technique. And I've also dabbled in fabric sculpture before using other methods like the starch method and some other products, but wasn't as satisfied with those products as this one. Uh -huh. That's cool. And, and for a while, of course, you, uh, you focus on, on the wire. And then I know that when you watch some of the PowerPoint courses, you got really excited about that. What was the thing that for you sparkled something different than what you had done before? I think it was just my level of expertise now. I have had so many more experience since the last time I did fabric sculpture. Uh, originally when I was doing fabric sculpture, I didn't do any armature, it was strictly fabric right. pieces. But now that I've had so much experience with wire, I really enjoy shaping it and building armatures and things like that. And it just really ups the level of possibilities that you can do with this mm -hmm. kind of medium. But you could be using clay and creating a sculpture. So why True. the textile in the picture? Uh, I have dabbled in clay, but it's more of just a hobby for me. Uh -huh. It's not something I got super passionate about, like with fabric. And again, that's probably just because I really love sewing and uh -huh. I really love making clothing. So fabric was just already in the back of my mind. I knew it well and I just had to go for it. That's very cool. That's very cool. So we're still going to talk about the individual pieces, but you have prepared a tutorial for us today. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's nothing insanely crazy, but it is a little simple project on how to create your own pair of lace wings using different types of laces and doilies. For this one, I used a type of embroidery lace and just a normal cotton doily. That's very cool. And we are going to learn how to make those wings, but we can look here and we have a finished piece where you made a moth. Yes. Right? And look how gorgeous it turned out to be. It's a gorgeous wall piece. We've Thank seen you. that before. But you have different plans for this set, right? Yeah, I actually think I am going to try to incorporate these into a fairy sculpture. Ooh, yes. ooh, I can't wait to see that. Now, you know, one thing that I always mention here in the studio is that how, how talented you are, right? You, Thank you. It's, it's, it's really impressive. But I want to, to understand, when you get an idea, what, what is your process? until the finished piece. For example, the other day we were talking about creating a standing figure and you came with the idea of this piece here, right? So tell me a little bit, how is that process for you? You, you just have uh, the idea of a finished piece and then you go or what? Actually, not really. I. I've actually got a thing called aphantasia where I lack the ability to picture things in my mind. It's basically like I have a blind mind's eye. So I actually look at things very scientifically when I'm starting my process, like what can be done, how can I do it, and how could I achieve this? Huh. So the end result is really always a surprise for me. Nice. Uh, it's more looking at it through a scientific point of view and just figuring out what works and what doesn't until I get the end result that I was kind of imagining. But, but in that process, you are really uh, creating the, the mechanics of everything Correct. without seeing the final picture. Correct. That's I rarely really cool. ever go in with a design plan. I just kind of let things form naturally. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's very, very cool. What do you say we allow them 
to watch the first par part of the tutorial because they are always anxious because they need to see if they have everything. <laughs> and then we come back and talk more about this piece. So absolutely, what do you say? Absolutely. So let's watch part number one. Hi guys, I'm Nick Keenitz. Welcome. I am super excited to be here today bringing you a cool tutorial on how to create beautiful lace wings using an awesome product that I've discovered called Paverpole. I love this medium. It is super versatile, super fun, and comparatively for me, it's been a superior product to other fabric stiffeners that I have tried. And just to give you guys some perspective, this is what we are going to be creating today. These beautiful, beautiful lace wings uh, made from embroidery lace and doily pieces. So it should be a lot of fun, and this is something that you can definitely work into a lot of different projects. As you can see, I made a moth here. It's a wall hanging piece, so I do have a little wire behind it so it can just hang on the wall nicely and be beautiful for everyone to see. So let's go ahead and jump into this, and I'm gonna show you guys some of the stuff that you're gonna need. Um, for this, you can realistically use just about any kind of lace you can find, as long as you like the pattern of the lace. Um, what I'm using today is I have a couple pieces of embroidery lace and a couple pieces of doilies that I found. So this is my embroidery lace, a very nice red sequin um, pattern. I loved this and I just thought this would be perfect and stunning. And I also have some pieces of old doily that I have cut up here. This was once a completely circular doily that I have just sectioned into four pieces uh, so I can get each little segment of the wing. And I've also started doing that with our embroidery lace. Uh, when you're picking out your lace, make sure that you're picking something that has a really fun pattern or something that you just like and can create nice wings out of. This one I really love because of all the swishes and swirls, a lot of interest going on, and it also creates easy wings. So I've taken the time to already separate the two pieces that I'm going to be using for the top wings. So I'm gonna move this off to the side until we need it again for later. So these two pieces are gonna become the top wings of our butterfly. We're gonna be putting them this way. And then our doily pieces are gonna be going underneath that as the bottom wing. And then at one point we are going to be adding a tail section of the red sequin fabric as well. Uh, and to do this, I am just using the Paverpole Transparent. I'm not going to too crazy with this. I love the look of the fabric, so I, I really love the transparent for that reason. Um, so what we're going to do first is I want to talk about the work surface that I'm working on. I actually have a really large sheet of thin plastic. I find this at the craft store, usually in the kids craft section uh, with the cardboard paper, the poster board, poster board, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, Really nice, super light, super flexible, super easy to work on. I'm loving it, but that's what we're gonna be using because we are going to have to press these pieces down onto our surface so they all bond and they are flat. Uh, so we're gonna start with that. We're gonna start with whatever wing is on the underside, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever wing is on the underside of your project, start with that one first and we're gonna build up. So I have my clear power pole here. It's just a white goopy mess right now. Uh, do stir this. If you're new to this, make sure that you stir your power pole before you start using it. So first thing, we're just going to take our doily and start saturating it with the power pole. You don't really need to dip it in if you don't want to. It can just waste the product a little more. Just make sure that you're kind of dipping it, your fingers in and massaging it around the material. Make sure you're getting the material really nice and coated before we lay this down. This is a very hands-on kind of medium, so be prepared. <laughs> okay. So first, now I'm going to pick which direction I want everything to be going. I'm just going to start pressing this flat and getting it, <clears throat> sorry, into a nice position that I like. I want to make sure none of the lace is too bunched up or the doily is too bunched up because I do want to be able to see those gaps and everything. I love the look of the lace. That's why I chose to do lace wings. So I'm just getting some of those spots that I feel like maybe needed a little more. 
Oop, oop, oop. Okay, and then just leave it like that for a minute. We're gonna do the same thing to our second piece. And what I'm gonna do when I lay this piece down is I do want to lay them pretty evenly apart from each other. I want to be able to line up the symmetry of my wings. So don't put one way down here and one way up here while you're doing this. I would definitely recommend doing them straight across from each other just so you can make sure that your wings are lining up and are gonna be nice and symmetrical. Move that up just a little bit and press, 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 press. Okay, so that is our first step. Oop. Our first step there. Now, depending on what you're doing with your wings, uh, on my project, I actually have it as a wall hanging, so the back of the project is never going to be uh, super visible to anybody. So. <clears throat> Ooh, I'm getting crazy, guys, getting crazy. The back of my project here, you can see, isn't the greatest looking thing, but again, it's not going to be visible because it's a wall hanging, but you can avoid, there are a couple ways you can avoid this and I'll show you. If you're using just doilies by themselves, you're not really gonna have the issue of a bad side because doilies look pretty good on both sides. Uh, but what we want to do, if you're going to be putting this onto, like, say, a sculptural piece that will be viewed from 360 degrees, I would recommend that you lay a wire into your doily at this stage before we put the second wing on the top. That's something that you would do if you're doing a sculptural piece because that will give the wings the structure that they need to not wilt. Uh, if pepper pole is left out into extreme temperatures, it can wilt, it won't really, it doesn't lose its shape, it will bounce back, but it does wilt in extreme temperatures. So that's just something that you want to keep in mind if this is going to be out in the heat or anything. Put a wire in the wings just to help keep the structure. A special offer time! Yeah! Today on this table I have the Power Pole Black. It is normally cost to you $179.95. But today, today only, just because you are watching this show, is just $135. $135. Can you imagine that? You can have this whole bucket for just $135. Just go to powerpoleamerica.com and get yours. Okay, exciting. The offer is exciting. The tutorial is exciting. Everything is exciting, right? Yep. Now, let's go into first about the lace thing because uh, did you use a grandma's doily? How do you how do you figure out? Because I know you have a lot of pieces where you did use the lace. Yes. So I actually do collect a lot of my doilies from antique malls and thrift stores like that. You can usually find bunches of them for about a dollar a piece or something like that. <clears throat> uh, so I just buy them intact and then I just look at the pattern and see really what the pattern is doing and what I can create from that pattern. Different sections, different pieces can create different shapes if you layer them on top of each other or just stack them next to each other. So I'm always just looking for really interesting patterns and things like that. But do, when you're buying them, do you already have a final a uh, project or thing for them or not? Because no. I go to thrift, I, I, I struggle with that. Because I know Jody McCraney in Russia, for example, she goes to thrift shops and she gets all these ideas of projects that she's going to make. And I go to the thrift shop and I see things, interesting things, but they are things. I don't have the next step. So how, how is it for you? For me, I, I just go and find just things I like. I know at some point I am going to come up with a project that will utilize that. <laughs> as long as I like the pattern, the print, the color, I just buy it. I don't nice. even care if I have a final project in mind. I know eventually I'll get to it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that approach. I like. So tell me a little bit. First of all, this was your first one, right? The first bug that you created. Actually, it was this oh, one. Oh, it was this one. So the one, let me show that to Nick here. And tell me a little bit about the process. You mentioned briefly when you were here the other time, but it went through a transformation since the last time, right? Yes. What happened? So originally, I didn't have any of the gold leaf on it. It was just the white crystals and uh -huh. the turquoise, but I felt like that was a little lackluster, and I tried to incorporate 
things that you might find here in Utah, mm -hmm. because it is a kind of bug that lives here in the streams. And I thought gold flakes might be a really fun little addition <laughs> to put into that. Wow. Very cool. And then the, this one? Yes, and then this one was my second piece. I wanted to do something a bit bigger, and I actually really like this one because this one isn't built with the same kind of armature as normal power pole structures. I just sewed the body, stuffed it with paper towels, oh. and then soaked that into the power pole and then hardened it that way. So it's more of like one of those Pira sculptures with less wire. Uh, it's armature. one of my favorites. I Thank really you. like And of course, tell us about the legs because that was, for me, was wow. The I legs. thought you had mixed some products there to make the texture. No, actually, I found out that um, towel or dish rag material, I'm already forgetting the name of what it's called, uh, really does well for creating this textured look. Um, and look how beautiful terry cloth, that is. The terry cloth, that's terry what it's called. Uh, I loved it because I wrapped it around the legs, but all of the seams blended up so seamlessly. Like, you mm -hmm. couldn't even tell that it was wrapped anymore. You can barely even see each segmented piece on the head because yes. everything just meshed so well together. Uh -huh. And the texture is gorgeous. Thank I mean, you. when you Thank see you. that on this little guy, yeah. very cool. I really How long did it take one. you to make this? Uh, to get it completely done, I think the process was about two, two and a half days. Mm -hmm. And then I had to wait for it to completely cure. Right. Very cool, very cool. And I know this is, well, we have another bug there with doilies. So it's we a do. good idea. They're going to, they're learning today how to yes. work with them. So <laughs> I've definitely been loving the doilies. I think they're just <laughs> super cute wings, and especially for bugs. Let's not mention that you bought a whole bag of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> I really did. Bugs to come. Yeah, I really did. I went crazy with the doilies. <laughs> Very cool. But basically, a uh, similar process from the tutorial we are watching today, correct? Correct. Okay. And this beautiful lady, I know it's your latest piece. Tell me about it. I have always loved the process of like creating ghost figures and ghostly shapes. Uh, I like the kind of abstract human form. So I thought it would be really fun to do a cheesecloth ghost lady, especially after seeing so many people that do cheesecloth ghosts for Halloween decorations, uh -huh. just the simple ones. And I was like, let's take it up a notch. <laughs> let's get a little more creative with it. So I tried to build the cheesecloth to kind of resemble almost shadowy smoke that's forming a pillar Ooh. into a human shape. Uh -huh. So that's really where that idea came from. <laughs> And, and, you know, even the dress, it reminds me a little bit of an octopus or something that can oh, go, perfect. That's right? That's exactly what I was hoping okay, for. Okay, <laughs> good. Very cool, very cool. And, and the mask thing, I, I mean, there are lots of stories I can take from that, but what was your story when you decided to create this? For, I'll be honest, it was more of a technical decision, uh -huh. because the face in this one is actually made of resin, so the pop or pepper pole doesn't actually bond to the resin. So I tried to do a mask uh, instead of attaching it to the face because I figured it would be easier to attach the plastic face into her hands rather than on her head. Mm -hmm. So I, it was more of a technical thing, less, a st less idea. I just wanted to play around with it. That's cool because I created like 10,000 stories for this one. Perfect. You know, <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. One, one of my, my first things, so in a former life, I, I used to like psychology a lot and I studied uh, Rogers, and one of the things he talks about, uh, Carl Rogers, I think, uh, is about the masks that we wear. So we wear a mask at home, a mask at work, a mask uh, with, with the people we love, and sometimes that gets exhausting, right? Because the real us uh, is even difficult for us to figure out. So yes. he had a whole kind of therapy around that. And the first time I saw this piece, or actually that you told me about this piece, I, that was the first thing that I thought, you know, we, sometimes we need to take that mask off, right? And Good. that's I what like he that. tells me. I so, like that. I'm glad people are coming up with their own stories for yeah. this piece already. Well, <laughs> well, and that, that's what art is about, <laughs> right? Exactly. Very, exactly. very cool. Okay, so let's watch part two of that tutorial and then we'll talk more, okay? Let's watch part two. So I've laid my wire down, and now I'm taking my red lace. I'm going to dip a little bit and then just kind of massage it around, making sure everything is nice and coated, nice and saturated. It's a little more right there. Okay. And with this particular type of lace, it is very see-through. There's a lot of big gaps in it. Uh, and I, 
what you need to do if you have a lot of big gaps in the lace is when you lay it down onto your doily wing or the bottom part of the wing, make sure that you're using the top lace to kind of block out that blunt edge and the wire. So I'm just going to try and find a good piece of the lace that can kind of help hide that. They know exactly where that is on this fabric. Right about there. And then what I'm going to do is just press it down, press it, press it down, press it down. For my original wall sculpture that I made, I didn't actually use the wire in the wings at all. Um, I just, I let them be as is, because like I said, it's not going to be going outside, it's not going to be dealing with extreme temperature. So I didn't bother with the wire, it's not always a necessary thing. But for educational purposes, we're adding it in today, just so you guys can get the idea of what you should do if you do want to have that. Okay, so I'm just saturating a couple more of the places that it looked like I didn't really get a good amount. Okay, just see a couple more little, little dry spots right here. And again, we're working on the plastic surface because Paverpole will not bond to plastic. So that's why we're doing it on the plastic surface and it doesn't really matter that we're pressing our wings into the plastic because at this, there's a certain stage where we are just going to peel the wings right off of this uh, plastic board and it should be perfect, they should be great. Okay. Get a little more right here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, scoot that down just a smidge. And that is how you're going to start the first wing. So we're just gonna leave that to dry now for a little while. And you're gonna wanna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna take my wire. You don't have to bend them this way, I'm just bending them so they're not overlapping each other and not really in my way. And just, I. I already have forgotten if I told you guys what the wire is. I'm actually using a 16 gauge half hard brass wire. And for those of you who don't know, half hard is a specific type of temperament in wire that is designed to be stronger. So this half hard wire is far more rigid than just normal craft wire. So I think it's really good for armature. Okay, now I'm gonna soak my second, my second wing here. Dip and mush, dip and mush. So I'm just massaging it in, making sure everything's nice and saturated. Again, you don't want to leave any places unsaturated because then the fibers on the inside could degrade over time. Especially if you are doing an outside sculpture, you definitely want to make sure that your piece is well saturated. Again, my piece is not an outdoor sculpture, but I'm still making sure that it's heavily saturated because that's just the way, that's the way we do. Okay. So now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to just do the same thing again. I'm just going to lay it down, hiding the seam of that doily and the wire, but I'm also trying to position them so that they are relatively symmetrical. So from here, this little loop is a little bit further out it looks, so let's stretch, stretch. Stretch that down. Oop, let's get a little more pepper pull right there. Okay. 
And again, I'm just going through and tacking down any places that seem like maybe they're too far or don't have enough of the paver pole. Just want to make sure everything is well saturated and ready to go. Okay. So now those are the top part of our wings and we do still need to make a bottom portion. The red tiers at the bottom, we still want to add those. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those really quick and we'll put those on as well. Ooh, my fingers are so sticky. Ooh, I had some scissors here. Here we go. So we're back to our piece of embroidery lace. Oh, I know this might be a little hard to see. The tail bit that I'm using is just part of the middle of the flora design of the lace. And I'm just going to cut it right down the middle in as straight as line as possible. Okay, and then I'm gonna trim. I'm just laying it out right now so I can measure to see how far I would like it to go down and extend. So I think we're going to chop it off right about here. And we'll do that same thing on this side. Oh, sorry, everybody. I'm dropping everything like crazy today. So now you're going to want to do those same things to this. And actually, you know what? We probably should have done this part first really quickly. I'm going to just fold that while it's still wet so I can get this piece on and under the wing. It is better to have this one a bit under the top wing simply because it makes it look more natural because the butterfly wings, the top wing is generally on the top of all of the other wings. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to saturate it again, massaging it around. I'm going to lay that piece. I'm going to line up the edges nicely, the edge of my wing here. Just press that down, press that together, fold that back, and then press those two together. So that's going to give you a really nice doily wing with lots of detail and interest. We're going to do that same thing to the other side. Ooh, got a little crazy with my paver pole there, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm a messy creator. It's the way I like it. So again, I'm just lining up those edges. You don't have to do that, but I do. I like that that seam really helps to hide that raw edge of the doily so it doesn't look so, so mangled and cut up. And again, I'm just laying that back down. You know what? This little bit here, I'm going to pepper pull that a little more. Okay. So that is going to be the basic shape of our wing. And we have the wire inside, so it creates a really nice armature for you to utilize if you're going to use a statue or something else of that nature. But again, with this wall hanging piece without the wire, it worked out just fine. It wasn't an issue. So we're just, so I just went without it. Now, from this stage, what you need to do is pretty important. What we have to do is we need to leave this alone for a while. Um, we need to let this dry. Pepperpole usually takes about two weeks to fully cure. Uh, and it takes about an hour to get hard enough to touch. Uh, so you need to let this sit for about 45 minutes to an hour until all of the pieces have tacked up, tacked together. So when we go to peel it off the plastic, the layers won't separate from each other. So definitely let these be for a while. If you can do it, if you can put this in a nice warm place, it'll dry a little faster, but don't overshoot it. If you overshoot, if you wait too long, 
the paver pole will become too rigid and we are, will not be able to put the bend in the wings. Now that's a little confusing, but I'll show you here. On my piece here, this might be a, a tiny bit hard to see, the wings are not completely flat. I have given them a bit of a ripple. So that way when it's kind of standing in, on the wall, it'll have a little dimension and it won't just look like a flat piece. So that's what we're going to do in the next stage. But like I said, we do need to let these tack up. So when we lift them off the plastic, the layers don't separate. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let this dry for a little while and then we'll be back. Let's get to know a little bit more about Powerball. Powerball is basically a textile hardener, but there are many things around that. For example, it's weatherproof. Yes, yeah, so if you, for example, you sculpt, the, 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 the final piece can go outside in the garden. It doesn't matter if you have very hot temperatures or very cold temperatures, it's going to be just fine. The other thing is it acts also as a bond, as a glue. So you can use that also to put things together. Uh, it works very well with any type of natural product, that natural fiber. So you can use with many textiles, you can use with leather, you can use with foam, you can use with pottery. So just imagine the amount of things that can be made or transformed by using PowerPoint. It's really, really impressive. The only thing that PowerPoint doesn't stick to is plastic. Right, the only thing. Now with natural uh, fibers or natural components, you can make the piece use power paw and leave it outside. Like I said, it's weatherproof. So even with extreme temperatures, it's going to be fine. Uh, if you're not using natural fibers, then it's a product for you to showcase inside the house, right? That wouldn't go well outside. And the reason is it would over time fade, especially the colors. Now, power paw comes in a liquid format. So you see here, it's liquid, and you apply that in layers into fibers, textiles, pottery, foam, like I said, any, any natural component would go well, anything but plastic. So let's first talk about the sizes and the colors that it comes with. So it has basically three different sizes, the 5,000 gram, grams and 500,000. And beautiful, beautiful colors. The bronze color, of course, if you're making sculptures to put outside in the garden and you want them to be like the bronze statue, this is the best one for you with an added thing that it never rusts, right? Like a normal metal would do. Uh, we have the bronze, the white, the skin color or peach color, we have the gray, the, the transparent, and the black. The transparent is really the one that is not weatherproof. It tends, if you put it outside, the colors below it will tend to fade over time. But of course, you can add the Josephine varnish to keep that going for a while. But it's the only one that we don't recommend you use for outside pieces, but indoor pieces, okay? Now, uh, you may be thinking, okay, what, what do I do if I don't want it so liquid? I, I need uh, to give more details when I put in my piece and things like that. Well, there are other products that I will talk in other videos, like the Power Plus, that you can, you can add to create more consistency to the product. So basically, this is Power Ball for you. Now just start thinking of all the things that you can create again. Textile art is perfect for you. Oh, are you a knitter and you would like to give three-dimensional items? Perfect for you. Mixed media artists. Yes, uh, you want to apply it to canvas pieces and give some dimension to that. That's for you as well. Pottery, that's for you as well. So yeah, Power Paul is really a life-changing product. Your creative soul needs the right product. And I have this right here on my table today yeah the power paul black this whole bucket for just 135 today only just today okay so go to powerpawamerica.com and get yours this will normally cost you 179.95 but just today because you are watching because you are here with us learning and watching and you want to be an artist we want to inspire you we want to help you so you can get this whole bucket of bobber paul black for just 135 get yours Ooh, i need to get one of those those offers are amazing Definitely. So, what usually inspires you? Because, you know, you go from bugs to ghostly ladies to, you know, who knows what. 
I think my biggest inspirations have to be human culture, science, and nature. Uh -huh. I think those three things are usually the biggest reasons I want to create a piece of art. That's good, that's good. What, what's the feeling when you see that finished? Because I, I know you take leaps, like I know you, you like to paint and you are a good uh, drawing artist as well, uh, and you did an amazing job in that piece and in this one. Uh, but tell me a little bit, do you face challenges in the process? You know, I used to face some more challenges when I was younger, but I think now with how much art I've done in, the, in my lifetime, I have gotten really good at rectifying any problems that I uh -huh, come across. Uh -huh. So usually the process goes generally pretty smooth for me. <laughs> That's good. That's really yes. cool. <laughs> I'm not like that. Yeah. I'm depressed. We'll get you there. We'll get you there. <laughs> I go like, for, to, you know, there's a frustration period that I think I go through. And the painting is something very frustrating to me. I'm not good at that. And so I, it comes to a point that I kind of hate that moment <laughs> when I have to paint and I mess up, mess up stuff. Okay, so what's your next step with this type of medium? My next step, I think, is just to start going bigger. Uh -huh. I've loved making the little sculptures, but now I think I want to push myself and really experiment with sizing mm. and balance and different kinds of things like that. That's very, very cool. Do you see classes in your future? Yes, I am actually working toward the certification process. Oh. This is part of my nice. my certification test. She's my first figure. Um, <laughs> then I just got to finish the other ones and fingers crossed. Yeah. But well, if this one is the first <laughs> one, I think you're doing good. Yes. Yeah, it's I would really love impressive. to be able to give classes on this stuff, especially here in the city. I think it's a really fun medium for people to just play around with and experiment with, especially uh, families. You yeah. know, you could get kids in on this and it's not dangerous. It's safe for them to try. It's safe for the parents. Yeah. I just think it's a good medium. You, you can people. have family meetings where you can teach people. Uh, one, one question that we get a lot is exactly, oh, how crowded is the marketplace if I want to get a certification and teach? And you've been around here a lot to know. It's, it's an open field right yes. now, right? Yes, <laughs> I was going to say. In the U.S. especially, yes. Yeah, I don't know many people, especially here in Utah, that are working with this kind of stuff at the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and even in other places, for example, like Canada. Canada has a lot more certified instructors that we do right now. Uh, it's still very good because it's, it's also a very big country. Yeah. So you really don't know many people dealing with the same medium uh, very close to you, right? Exactly. So that, that should not be a... An issue. Now, with the finished pieces that you have, do you plan to keep them, to sell them? Oh, no. I, pl I sell everything. I, Good. <laughs> I, I'm all about that. As much as I love my art, I also love to share it. And I don't want to live in a house that's just piled up with art stuff that isn't doing anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. So if people are interested in something like this, where should they go? Uh, mostly... It's mostly easiest to find me on Facebook. Uh, Frequently Unique is generally where I'm posting all my things right now. I'm still in the process of building a website that will be frequentlyunique.com. Uh -huh. um, but until that happens... Social media is the way to go. Social media. And I am on Instagram as well, Frequently Unique. Nice, so they can get inspired. So let's watch part number three, and we'll come back. Yes. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, so when we left off, we had just laid down, we cut out and laid down all of our pieces of our lace wings. They have been coated in the transparent paper pole and we pressed them flat against our sheet of plastic. Uh, remember, paper pole does not bond to plastic, so that's why we're doing it on the sheet so we can easily peel these wings off of the sheet and position them. A couple of things before we jump into that I did want to talk about. This at the it's at this stage that I like to start the embellishment process. And the reason is, is because paper pole goes, the paper pole transparent goes on white, but then clears up as it dries. So I like to let the paper pole kind of dry a little bit so I can see the pattern in the material again. Uh, for this example, I'm doing this because I really like that moth wings have eyes and things on them. Um, so I want to be able to position my eyes symmetrically. So I want them hitting in the same place on the pattern of the lace. So that's why I've waited for the paper pole to dry a bit before I started embellishing. Uh, just an example of some things you can do. I found these little circular pieces of lace that I think will make spectacular eyes on the wings. Because that's a feature of moth wings that I really like and butterfly wings. I love the eyes. I think that's really cool. So that's something I'm probably going to add on 
but I'm just showing you guys examples of things that you can do currently. And for these little round lace pieces, what I've actually done is I found an old piece of lace that had florets in it, and I just took the center of the flower, just cut the center right out, and that's how I found these cute little circular eye pieces. So, you know, go to your local, like, thrift stores or antique stores and see what kind of fun doilies that you can find with different patterns and different shapes in them because those are all going to be really useful when you're doing lace wings like this. The second thing that I wanted to talk about is if you remember in the beginning I mentioned that embroidery lace like I'm using here, the red lace, it has a wrong side. So the wings of my piece here they don't look good from this side because of that. You can't really see any of the sequins or the pattern. All you see is the stitching and the black thread. You can't really see a lot of the detail like you can in the front. So if you're wanting to make these wings for something that is more sculptural, that's viewed from a 360 degree angle, what I would recommend doing is this. So imagine this little piece of lace here is my big chunk of red lace here. So what I would do is I would coat one of these in powder pole and lay that pretty side down, okay? Then I would take the one that looks good from both sides, powder pole that, put that on, and then from there, I would take another piece of this red lace that is the exact pattern as this, powder pole it, and lay that on top of the other red piece so they are basically like mirroring each other kind of. So when you actually take this off the plastic and flip it, you'll have a pretty side to each wing. And that's what'll give you a good wing if you're trying to do something that is viewed from a 360 degree angle. So just one more little trick that I had to show you. And the last thing, for this step, I have removed the armature wire so I can show you guys how to position the wings that don't have the armature in them. This step that I'm about to do may not be completely necessary if you have built the wings to have the wire inside of them. You should be able to just position the wire in the shape that you want and, that, and let it tack up from there and that'll give you your shape. But because this doesn't have the wire in it, we have to do something a little different. So I'm just double checking, touching it. Nothing seems to be too sticky, too tacky, so I should be good to go on lifting these. Let's find out together, shall we? So I'm just starting from the corner, and I do want to try and just grab as many of the pieces of the lace as I can just to be extra safe, but then I should be able to just peel this right off the plastic. And as you can see, we now have one nice solid piece of fabric and it's going to make a lovely wing. So I'm going to peel those off and just set them to the side for a sec. Do that with both of them. You know, just take your time with it. Don't get too crazy. And I could have waited a little longer to do this. Uh, like I said, wait about 45 minutes to an hour before you start lifting because you don't want your pieces to separate. Ooh, this one's real stuck on there. Okay, so there we've got both of our beautiful lace wings off the plastic and ready to be moved around. So now I'm going to show you, we're going to be creating this kind of ripple in the wings. I know that's so hard to tell you guys. It's subtle, but for a nice wall hanging piece, I think it gives it more dimension and depth, which I really like. I didn't want it to just be a completely flat piece. I wanted there to be some, some movement, like he's shaking his wings off or something. So what I have done is, I found plastic silverware to be really helpful in this kind of situation, because again, Paverpole does not bond to plastic. So what I've done is I've just got some plastic forks that I've put clay under just so they prop up sideways. You can lay them down flat and just let the natural curve of the fork or spoon do the job for you, but I wanted a little more height, so I have clay on one side just so they prop up because the weight of the lace wings will make your fork or spoon fall if you put it on the side. So that's just acting as my kickstand. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our first wing And we're just going to pick where you want it to go and just lay it down onto your fork. And you see that gives you a really nice rolling ripple in the wing, which 
probably is hard to see from the top view, but we have a really nice arc right here and right through the center of the wing, so it's not just a completely flat wing. And you're not limited to propping up your pieces this way. Um, this big piece of flexible plastic that I'm working on is actually really great because if you left the wings on the plastic and then bowed it up and propped it between two like towers of books or something, you could actually let them dry that way and your wings would bow out. You could also do the reverse and have them bow down. Uh, so the plastic sheet could be really helpful in getting the movement that you want as well, but plastic silverware really does, really does wonders. So again, we're just taking this, and I want to lay them kind of in the same position, just so the ripple is the same on both sides. And then just kind of shape it as you want. It's still, in this stage, after about an hour of drying, it's still very malleable and very shapeable. So you can definitely play around with the position. If you want to get multiple forks and spoons and put them under a bunch of different places, feel free, you know, experiment. It's a wing, it has movement, they flutter around. So get creative with it. Um, but then from there, you really just need to, at that point, you're basically done with these. The only thing that you really need to do is just leave them alone at this stage. And let them harden for like two or three days before you start to try and attach it to your main sculpture. For this moth here, I waited two days for the wings to completely cure before I tacked them onto the moth body. And again, I did that because they don't have the armature inside of them. I didn't want them to flop around after I had attached them to my the body of my piece. So I let them tack up for two, three days until they were really, really rigid. Then I attached my then I attached them to the body. And I would recommend probably doing that same thing with any sculptural piece. Uh, I have an example here. I did that same thing with this beetle. I just did the same method with these doilies. I let them dry completely flat though. After two days, that's when I then attach them to the beetle body. And then just let that dry and it was done. So you can really play around with this and have a lot of fun. There's a lot of different things that you can do. And as you can see, even just the doily itself is quite rigid. It doesn't fall. It stays in the position that it needed. And that's with no armature whatsoever. So, you know, definitely play around with this. There's a lot of things that you can do. I think it's a very versatile little thing. And the lace is beautiful. Why not have some beautiful lace fairy wings, uh, lace butterflies, things like that. Um, the possibilities are just endless. And like I said, you can probably find some really cheap doilies at like antique stores. I know in my town here, we have an antique store downtown where I can get them for like a dollar a piece. So it's really, they're inexpensive and really fun. So I think this is something that can really add a lot of interest to pieces. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'd really, I wanna see some of the wings you guys come up with, maybe get a little inspiration from you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it and I want to see some of the wings you guys come up with. Thank you so much. So Nick, one thing that I think people will think when they, while they are watching this interview, especially beginners, is that they're going to say, oh my gosh, I could never make that. It's so complicated, I don't know. Or, or the, the, the excuse, the preferred excuse Oh, I would never have a patience to do that or <laughs> things like that. But it can, it can seem daunting to people to get started. And you took le the leap like that, right? You said, I like I this, let me try. Yeah. What would you tell them if they are in a state of fear of getting started? I would honestly just tell them it's not as daunting as you're making it out to me in your mind. This is fabric sculpture, so it's actually a little more freeform than just normal sculpture. It doesn't have to be exactly precise, like if you were a polymer clay artist mm -hmm. and sculpting people like that. It has a little more of that um, freedom to experiment with design elements and things like that. So, And it's a very forgiving it. Uh -huh. medium, I think, in my opinion. So I would just always encourage people to just give it a try. I mean, the worst that'll happen is you'll find out you don't like it and then you move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you mentioned the thing that you're thinking about uh, creating bigger pieces, right? Which, which is one thing that 
also attracts me. I'm actually creating a bust right now that is about this big. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I did the whole structure, and, and then I freaked out with the next step. So <laughs> I'm waiting for the fear to go away. But that's one thing that attracts me, because uh, it makes it possible for, for us to create bigger pieces. In many mediums, we are constrained uh, by what they can do or even the cost. So for example, with air dry clay or, or polymer clay, uh, if I think about a very big sculpture of any type, that will cost quite a bit, right? And yes. sometimes the medium doesn't even fit for that. Well, here is creativity, recycling, and then adding the, the texture, the... Yeah. That is definitely one of the things that I really love about fabric sculpture. You know, there's a lot of issues with uh, the fashion industry being one of the biggest pollutants right now. Mm -hmm. So many used up fibers are just being wasted. Uh, and I think this is a really good way yes. to reclaim all of that stuff so it doesn't just end up in a landfill, but it can end up in somebody's shelf. Uh-huh, exactly, exactly. You, you brought a very good point. Sometimes we do a boo-boo with our clothes and you just throw it away. Right when you, you could give, be giving another purpose oh, exactly, to that, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And and what do you say about your shopping habit, for example, that you go, I like the pattern, I like the texture, and I don't have to have a set project right now for that. But I do believe you, you're not a hoarder either, right? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> because that's always the danger, right? We yes. just start collecting stuff. But you know you're going to find a new purpose for every single thing and. So you, you say fre frequently unique, unique is your yes. handle, right? Uh, is this something that is on your mind all the time? I need to create something different that nobody has done or, or not when you're creating? When I'm creating, it's not so much that I want to do something that other people aren't doing. It's just I don't want to do the same thing that I've uh, already done. Uh -huh. I want to progress always. <laughs> that's, that's very good. That's a very healthy habit to have. Well, Nick, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Right? I hope to have you back with another oh, tutorial. Of I course. Bet, yeah, course. I bet you're going to come up with something new very, very soon. So, yeah, thank you very much, and I hope you have enjoyed Nick here. Thank Contact you. him on social media. I'm here to remind you that we have a special offer today. This Power Pole Black, this whole bucket of Power Pole Black, normally will cost $179.95. But today only it's $135. Yeah, $135 for this whole bucket of Power Pole. You can do so many projects with that one. Go to powerpoleamerican.com and get yours. Hey, Jessica, come over here. Oh, yeah, give me some space Oh, here. yeah, all the space is yours because <laughs> you're going to need it. Oh, yeah. We've been getting so many cool pictures from artists about their art with PowerPoint mm -hmm. that I decided to call this segment Inspiration Gallery. Oh, I love that part. Yeah, Angela Termash sent some of her pieces. Mm -hmm. You want to see? Yeah. Let's take a look sure. at them because they are gorgeous. Look at the bicycle oh. lady. Huh? Look at those beautiful ties that she has and that hat. I, I would look gorgeous that. on the hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the crow. Oh. The crow. Angela, this would make a phenomenal tutorial for our oh, show. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, Ooh. I love this one. Reminds me of a, a cartoon that, uh, that was when I was young with two crows. And they used to dress like that and they were spies. It was very cool. Yeah, Isn't and the reminds... base of this for sure is black power pole. Oh yeah, well, which is the offer from this week, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just saying, nice, <laughs> I like you, I like your style. Ooh, look at that mermaid. Love that. I, I, oh, wow, I think it's a metal structure. Yeah. Yes, very cool, very beautiful. So creative. Ooh, Ooh, she likes the hats. She's yeah. just like me. I look terrible with hats, but I love figures with hats. Very good. Very cool. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, this is our uh, inspiration gallery for this yeah. week, and I hope guys and gals love those and get inspired. But if you have pieces, send it to us. Send Please. to, to Povercraft TV because we want to see them. Yeah, and we can post on social media too. Yeah. And now it's time to watch a business tip with Robert Imbriale. Let's watch. Hey friends, Robert Imbriale here with your Marketing Minute. I wanna share something with you today about selling your art online. One of the biggest secrets, one of the biggest tips I can give you is that if you're gonna sell your art online, remember the person is not there in, in physically to see it, right? So they're seeing it online. So what's the most important thing you think? Is it the description? Yeah, it's a big part of that, that's the description. 
I'll talk about that in another marketing minute. But the number one thing you have to do is have a good, clear, sharp, well-lit photograph. Now, you might say, well, I don't have a professional camera and I would beg to differ because you have one of these on your desk, don't you? And these cameras in here are amazing today. It's not photography like the old days. It's, it's very different. And these things are so powerful and they produce such great results that I would encourage you to use them. Now, if you're saying, well, I don't have great light, one thing you can do is you can take your art outside on an overcast day, not a sunny day, on an overcast day, and you get this beautiful soft lighting and you can photograph it and it's, it's no shadows, it's shadowless lighting. It looks almost like it's in a studio. Now, photograph on a clean background. Don't have a lot of stuff in the background. And if you can't get a clean background, you can go on Amazon and look for seamless paper. You just need a small roll, depending on the size of your art. It costs you 20 bucks, you can get this. Just drape it up and then photograph your art against it. So the art shows up, it just stands out above the background. A lot of people will photograph their art and the background's really busy and you can't really make out what's the art and what's the background, right? You don't want to do that. Clear photos, uncluttered background, decent lighting, you're going to sell a lot more art. All right, follow me online if you'd like more tips. Robert Imbrielli, and uh, I'm on all the social media platforms. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll talk again real soon. I have a question for you. Have you ever thought about being a power call instructor? If not, it's time to think about your certification process. Yeah, here on our platform, we have the right course for you to become a power pole instructor. So I want to talk to you about three things today. The first one, when you start your power pole um, certification process, you have to create your own piece. Today, here on my table, I have some examples of projects that you can do using power pole. For example, this little bug here, um, they for sure used power pole to create this. And then all of the technique that they use, you learn and create your own. I'm using this one just an example, but you will create your own project, okay? So after you create your own project and have all your questions answered, then you jump to the best part, that it's learning how to teach, right? You have to learn how to um, help others to learn the same process that you did. And the last but not least, you have to learn how to market your business, how to promote your business, um, how to promote your classes. After that, you will be ready, ready to go and inspire other artists through um, your project, through your art. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Yes, join us next time. See ya!